Hey, this is Dave and Arno again. I'm Arno from Revelator, to Revelator Studio. And I'm Dave from Vanity Projects. And uh, this is the third installment in our series where we record uh, our thoughts on specific tools, methods, and um, marketing tips for architects and designers. And tonight we're going to talk about video. Video for architects. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with a question for you, Dave. Yep. What are your thoughts on video as a marketing tool for architects? Um, I think video is awesome and I almost always see it working really, really well because we don't get many opportunities to actually go and visit architecture um, and architects work, particularly if they're residential, especially, but all kinds, we don't really get to actually physically go there. And I find with video, you get that opportunity to kind of physically visit the project, which is you just can't replicate really. And also you get to meet the architect um, in a lot of cases or the client, and you don't get to do that any other way. So for those reasons, I reckon video just smashes it. There just isn't anything better. Yeah, I think you have a good point in saying that it's a good way to see a project uh, because let's be frank, most projects, no one will ever see like very yeah. few people travel to see architecture. So it's a good way to get into the spirit of the building and uh, the, the mind of the architect. And I think it's still a wildly underutilized um, uh, medium for, for talking about architecture and design. Mm. Uh, there are a few examples out there that are doing a good job of either using video as kind of a teaching and educating tool. Uh, what's the, this name's guy, uh, 30 by 40 workshop yeah. or something like yeah. that? 30 by 40 architecture workshop yeah. on YouTube, massive account. I've never seen too many of his videos, but the few I've watched were so well done and compelling that it's it makes a case for itself. I think it's a great way to do video. They're so beautiful, and, those videos. Like his production and, is crazy. And I'm sure this guy is, more work than he can handle now so yeah. Yeah. um in the long term it's also potentially one of the best roi on your investment but i think that there's also something to be said for video as a medium that can capture things that no other medium can not writing mm. not photography and really not even frankly visiting the building in person because the video is it's kind of a highly curated view of what the project is and so you can skip over all the crappy parts that nobody wants to see and focus on the important things. Yeah. Um, and like you said before, it gives you an opportunity to add more information in the form of like an interview with the architect, an interview with the homeowner, if we're talking about residential or the users for bigger projects. Or um, you could even write a script and have a, you know, like, um, uh, National Geographic style narration of like this is the building and its element and yeah. you know this kind of stuff. I think that could be very cool too. Yeah. Um, so if if we both think that it's an underutilized and and a medium with a tremendous potential, where would an architect who has no idea what they're doing start? <laughs> That's a really tricky one because. It's such a big commitment to film a project because of the because of the time involved and also the extent to which it can inconvenience a client. You know, you usually get such a narrow window of opportunity to even photograph a project. So for you to decide one day, oh, I'm just going to turn up and start making a film at, as an experiment, it's quite an investment in so many ways. So one option is actually to be more of a stand out the front of places and talk about them and it may not even directly involve your work one model that i've seen work really well is the if you were mine series by wowa in melbourne who um mm -hmm. she stands outside pro just regular houses and talks about what she would do if it was her project I've, a couple of other clients have tried a similar model except maybe they've adapted it and instead of talking about a project that they like uh, they might be talking about a piece of local architectural history, for example, and sharing their knowledge that way. And so that's an example where you don't necessarily have to involve your own project, but you still get to be an educational or entertaining presence in a video. And you honestly just need somebody to point an iPhone at you. 
you don't it doesn't need to be particularly difficult so starting there could be really good uh and then working your way up in terms of difficulty until the point where you go okay i'm actually going to hire a professional who does this all the time and that's when you might you know get somebody to come and actually during that photography phase also make a film about the project which Mm. is when you start getting really professional in terms of how it looks and you know what you're capturing yeah that actually makes a lot of sense and i really like your idea of like not even doing it about specific projects video like writing or a podcast you could do a video on anything um and if it's a marketing tool to help your potential clients understand who you are and get in your head you may not even want to do anything about your projects and let the photography do the talking and then talk about you could do video interviews like what we're doing right now which is cheap and dirty yeah uh i don't believe you do a ton of editing on that zero yeah just go so, straight onto youtube <laughs> so exactly case in point it's like we're talking about something of interest to architects and it doesn't have to be fancy but yep. there's still some value in there hopefully hopefully yep. there's some value Absolutely. um yeah. but uh, yeah and you can also the cool thing about video is that you can there's a million ways to do to create narratives that speak to who you are and what you do without necessarily hiring a crew with a director and a videographer yeah. and a focus puller and a sound guy. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you have the means, but that's crazy. Um, and there's also, if, if I were to recommend someone how to do it quick and dirty, I would either say, start shooting stuff yourself and then find someone uh, that can edit it for you. And maybe also someone who can kind of organize those this footage into a coherent whole Mm -hmm. or write a script before shoot what you want for your script and then pass the editing on to someone else because having someone else the editing is not overly expensive and i think it's what might it's what might bring the most value to your project yeah and i mean iphones today have amazing cameras yes uh and if you have a dslr you can get a gimbal for about a thousand bucks so it's not cheap, but it's not incredibly expensive. Uh, you can get a drone for fifteen hundred bucks. So all of a sudden, you have yeah. a phone, a DSLR, a drone, and and multiple ways of putting this together. Yeah, um, a phone and a drone. I mean, that's the that's the killer combo. I think. Like, yeah, I've had clients pick up a drone and start just playing with it, and straight away they're just making the most insane footage. But then it's a question of what do you do with it if you've just got drone footage. Um, you could so you need to also think about then what do you film to kind of accompany that drone footage like that sits around it right like so no but there's tech the technology is 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 simple and it's there um i just quickly touch on the on two different ways because you brought this great thing about kind of doing it yourself or getting somebody to do it Mm -hmm. i think there's like a style of video about architecture that everybody really likes, which is kind of the design emotive style, the local project style, where it's very composed and photographic. It's like mm-hmm. the camera is usually sitting still or only moving a tiny bit and it's extremely cinematic. You wouldn't want to attempt to do something like that with your iPhone because it's you're probably just not going to pull that off. I mean, you could try, but I would usually suggest against it. What I would what you would normally do if you were doing it yourself would be probably something more like a tour where you're walking the camera person around the project and talking about what what that like the design as you walk through the house and those are super simple and weird example but there's there's so many of these different sort of luxury house tours or project tours on youtube but and just simple examples just one that comes to mind is this account called producer michael where this guy looks at luxury houses and things like that but i think of all the channels out there his is like one of the simplest where almost anybody could achieve it it's just about you kind of enthusiastically being excited by the house that's the main draw of the project of the of the channel and so i think like anybody can do that but i've also had clients that have just walked around Mm -hmm. kind of carrying their camera in front of them pointing outwards and they're just talking and that works too and those have been great videos 
the only criticism of one of those videos was that it was too wobbly and made people feel a bit seasick, which comes back to your point about maybe you just need to um, get a sort of a gimbal or something to hold your phone, but maybe you don't. I mean, you just need that stabilization turned on. But um, Yeah, but a, yeah. an iPhone gimbal is a couple hundred bucks. I mean, yeah, it's not so an crazy. IPhone gimbal, and I think tours and just walking somebody through the house is just an awesome way to go. Um, yeah, and, and so there's this uh, lady architect in Toronto who's like really into Instagram, or at least she was until uh, I left a couple of years ago. Yeah, and she would do uh, stories of her projects. So uh, she'd do like 10 second uh, snippet, and she would say, "Oh, this is where the project is sad. These are the challenges we're facing." And the client came to visit today, and we did this. And then you know how you can aggregate the stories into a longer arc over yep. time. So um, you could, you don't have to do it on Instagram, but you could realistically have kind of video log or vlog, I guess I'm too old for this crap, <laughs> a yep. vlog of your project over time, where every time you go, you take a 30 second video of what happened since the last visit or what challenges you've had. Uh, you know, if you want to get your clients comfortable with with you and how you work, like tell them what problems you're facing and how you're uh, overcoming them, because they'll want to know that if the shit hits the fan, you're not going to run away and hide and you're going to help them overcome. And I'm sure most architects do that anyway, but it's a great opportunity to market yourself and your like work ethic and ability to ex to execute stuff and your expertise. Um, so that that would be very simple and that editing that would take couple hours so you could pay a kid like 50 bucks to do it or whatever yeah you know um none of that has to be ex very expensive and then uh you could have it, it would be a bit rough it's not like a slick documentary a la anthony uh, richardson but mm. um you could still have a short documentary on what you do and, and tell interesting stories about your project so i think that the the, the main point i'm trying to make is that the sky is the limit you just have to be creative. Uh, you just have to come up with new ways of experimenting. And what I would suggest is start small. Like if you want to start a YouTube channel, like put some crap on there that uh, you're not really sure about, but just put it out there and see how it does. And then over time, keep doing it. And then that your practice is going to evolve in such a way that, you know, within 20, 50, 100 videos or a couple of years of doing that on the regular, you'll have a better sense of what works with attracting clients. You'll have more confidence in doing it and you'll have evolved your own creativity in making videos because you'll see, oh, this worked, this doesn't work, this looks yep. like crap, this looks great. Uh, so maybe you just need to buy a, a light or something. Like I'm realizing the, the lighting on <laughs> my setup sucks. So I need to invest yeah. in some proper lighting because I have everything else that works well. Yeah, you incrementally um, improve those things for yeah. sure. Um, I mean, I have great lighting when it's daytime and I have like morning light in there, but at night, yeah. like we're talking right now, it's just terrible. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there, you could do, you know, 50 to a hundred videos. And I was thinking about that and going, oh, that sounds, you know, quite daunting. Um, but even it doesn't, it doesn't have to be necessarily like an ongoing video project. I think it does have to be if you're DIYing it that it will take you time to get better and to make more content but even if you're hiring professionals a few really well made and really prominently placed videos on your website will make an enormous difference in terms of within the first you know 10 minutes first impression of somebody being on your website they can learn a thousand times more about you and trust you so much more and be so much more excited about your work if they spend five minutes of that watching a beautifully made film about one of your best works or about your practice. And there yeah. are numerous examples of that, but a couple that come to mind are the Terrarium House video on John Elway's website, an architect in Brisbane. And mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a larger firm in the UK called Field and, Fo Field and Foles that has a really nice profile video on their about page that really just makes you super into their practice when you watch it. And I think videos like that, um, you know, can somewhere can cost somewhere like around a couple of thousand dollars to get made by a professional, you know, even a, even professional architectural photographers, a lot of them are now also offering videography 
and they're doing it in a similar price range to yeah, their photography. Yeah, abso- absolutely. And so and a video like that, and the reason I think it's cool to potentially get an architectural photographer to do it is that aesthetically, it will look consistent with the photography that's on your website. It's not that that's like compulsory by any means, but it's an extra nice touch when the person who shoots your work is also then shooting your film. Mm-hmm. Um, so like those videos, those introductory videos can sit there and have a shelf life that lasts years and years and years and be seen thousands or tens of thousands of times and they can be an incredibly good investment. And if you look around architects' websites, I would say 95% don't have that. And it's only yep. the rare exception that have a high quality video that introduces you to the practice. So it also, it also differentiates you from other architects instantaneously so i think it's some of the best money you could possibly spend if it's the right project and you find the right person to do it yeah Um, so so you could spend that money and do that and i think if you do it right and use it for a long time it can have an incredible roi but even something as simple as um the video equivalent of a photograph so you just set up a camera statically and shoot like 20 seconds uh there's a uh it's not a beautiful video, but there's a local architect here that has, it's not beautiful in the sense that it's not really high quality. You can Shots tell fired. it's probably, <laughs> I'm not going to say names, but you can see it's yeah. probably like only 720p or something. But if you had a yeah. better camera and shot the same thing at the right time, you have this like 30 second clip of a static frame of your building. And there's in this particular one, there's a dog in the house that's yeah. in front of the house. So it gives a little bit of life and it's kind of cool. Yep. Even Absolutely. that, that on the loop, it, it animates your web page. So you could easily have one of those for each project because these yep. ones, there's no editing. It takes two minutes to shoot and uh, that lives on forever. So if yep. you, even if you don't want to go the route of like, oh, I'm going to pay someone a couple thousand dollars to do like a mini documentary, um, you can have kind of a cheaper way of doing that without breaking yes. the bank or spending any money at all, to be honest. 100%. A little bit of movement creates a much more premium feel to the website um, and it yeah. makes it it makes it makes feel, I don't know, it, it, you emotionally respond to video just in a way that you just... Ma- it's not better than photography, but it's different. It's like a different kind of emotional response. And I think that well, that sort of distinctiveness is, is one of the things. Now, if everybody was doing it, maybe it wouldn't have the same impact, but video has these obstacles and this hurdle that means that so few people get get into it um but as you know as we've talked about it 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 can take on so many different forms it could be your regular sort of communication method you know maybe you don't write to get your ideas and your views and your work out there or maybe Mm -hmm. you don't take that many photos so maybe you do video um and that might be your your option and your thing and you do that right or it could be that one time or very infrequent but extremely high quality and professional version mm-hmm. that you might do that, that that sits there and represents you um or or a combination of all of the above you exactly. could have that slick video that lives on your website and then you could have like less uh high production value videos that maybe you use for social media or you have on a youtube channel somewhere That's or whatever right. um i think the beauty of video is that because it introduces the d- dimension of time uh it opens up the realm of creativity. Like the, there's so many things that haven't been done yet that are waiting to be invented. Like yeah. not the, the 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 technique, but just the way a video is put together and what is being said and how it's being said. So uh, it's probably the, one of the most promising mediums, I would say with podcasts, because I still think despite the fact that everybody and their dog has a podcast, there's still, uh, it's such an intimate media. I mean, we've yep. already talked about that, so we're not going to get into this, but video is very much the same yep. uh, with the added bonus of having visuals. Um, and what's interesting is that so many podcasts have video versions now uh, and, and they reside on like iTunes and then they're also on YouTube and YouTube is nothing more than just two talking heads side by side. Yeah. Um, but there's somehow people watch that. I'd rather listen to the podcast because I'm not interested necessarily in like yep. watching people talk if there's no other visual. But I can see that how it's 
it has potential to reach out more people because some people live on YouTube, some people live on uh, Apple yeah. Podcasts or Google Podcasts or whatever. So you, it, it, it expands the, the reach as well. Yeah, so if you want to put a video, this is a, the limitation of podcasts is that when it comes time to actually put it on Instagram or YouTube or anywhere else, you become very limited in how you can share it. People try and sort of band-aid over it by doing like a little, they call them audiograms where you can see like a squiggly line for the sound or a transcription, but they just don't get very good engagement. They basically fall off in the algorithm. So you kind of need to have faces to put to put there that's part mm -hmm. of the reason that we record the video for this is because we want to be able to put it on youtube and share it that way um yeah so, and if so you ever want to do it yeah. as a po audio only podcast and you already have the audio track so you don't need to re-record it or do anything you just extract yeah. the audio from the video yeah there's yeah. a couple of um extra video examples that i think just because it's always interesting to give people more more leads that they can look into and think about um mm -hmm. One thing that actually comes up if we're talking video, we probably have to touch on TikTok, um, weirdly. Oh, but, please um, no. No, no, but I will quickly. I have never, I personally, for me personally, as far as social media goes, the only two platforms I find interesting are Twitter and TikTok at the moment. I personally yeah. enjoy TikTok more, but I, I get my news from Twitter. So I, I sort of look at TikTok and I'm, my feed on there is filling up with professional people educating the public about what they do mm -hmm. like somebody i follow on there is like a highly complex tax accountant who sets up trusts and things for wealthy clients and he's on there every day posting videos answering questions about tax structures yeah and i'm such a nerd for following that and being into that but it's one mm -hmm. example of where it's obvious that an architect could use that platform it's all video uh, there are architects that use that platform, but to to start to develop a real back and forth with an audience where you're answering lots and lots of questions, and that's been attempted on Instagram in the in that in that product, but it hasn't really caught on. People don't really engage with it. They don't really submit questions. Mm -hmm. But there's this great feature on TikTok where if somebody leaves a comment on one of your videos you can click a button and reply with a video and then it puts their comment on the video and you'll then you do a reply and it creates this feedback mm. loop of more comments, more replies to comments and mm -hmm. it ends up being this like infinite source of inspiration for these very short videos. And mm. I think there's heaps of room for architects to go on there and start off by doing some pretty stuff with their projects like... You know, this is some cute before and after type things and here are the steps and here's what, you know, explaining something. You can do like a little voiceover thing. It's really easy. But then once mm. you start getting some comments, start engaging with people. I think that would be a great way to use video on TikTok and I'm not seeing anybody doing it and I haven't even spoken to any of my clients about it yet. It's something that is just, as far as things that are new and emerging, that that is definitely going to be something that I think we'll see more of. Um, yeah, I would I would put out one caveat to that yeah. is uh, you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket and reside on only one platform. No, no, of course not. But I, but it's uh it's another one to go and explore. We don't have that many platforms to share architecture anymore um, that are relevant. I mean, it's primarily Instagram and LinkedIn. So I think it's good to add a third TikTok because yeah, your chances of growing an audience on LinkedIn and TikTok and, and Instagram are quite low you know you really you you have to put in so much effort to just gradually grow an audience and particularly now on instagram people mm -hmm. are finding it very hard to gain followers and gain audience because the, the platform just has so many content creators on there whereas i think tiktok's a bit more like trying to buy some bitcoin or something like it's high risk high reward it it might not work out but it if it does it'll work out really big so i think there's an opportunity to do a little bit of that and have that work but i just had one kind of other one kind mm -hmm. of other example is and this just came to mind from from a client they they actually hired a videographer to who was their photographer to mm -hmm. go and actually capture to go to site and capture the construction process and make it look beautiful <laughs> and yeah. they did that because 
they, they're an architect, but they're also a builder. And mm -hmm. they were finding that we've got this architectural side, which is really super, super gorgeous and, and it looks amazing. But we're kind of letting it down on the building side. We're not really showing building in the same level of mm -hmm. attract. We're not making it look as attractive as we are architecture. So sent down, sent their videographer down to just capture some extremely cinematic video of like people doing like a circular saw through a piece of timber or like putting up some plaster. Like they did all this, all this beautiful B roll and they've ended yeah. up using it on their Instagram account. And it's, it's ended up being just like really, really, you know, quite beautiful. And I'll just have one more example. Cause it, cause it's so it connects to that one. There was a client who was doing a multi-residential project. So a bunch of apartments and they really wanted to capture, they had this great idea of like, well, we'll use video to capture the project, but, let's also capture the neighborhood and the community and make video sort of like what you were describing before of not quite video, but moving images to kind of go on the website, right? To go with it. Yeah. So like yeah. they were like capturing all this very nostalgic looking footage of like the cafe strip and the, peop and the people walking their dogs and like this sort of stuff, but doing it in this like really cool way. And you just got such a feel for like what that area felt like and what it felt like to be there. And I think that was another really creative example that we don't see that often of turning the camera, not just on what you'd expect, but sort of looking at other parts of the project or the context and adding extra sort of storytelling and feel to it that would have otherwise just been completely missing. I just think video yeah. is just so good for all of that stuff. So, man, we've and covered so many different ways you can use video. <laughs> I, have, I have a couple more. Go for um, it. Wait, there's more. Um, I'm, I'm doing a two year time lapse on a client's project right now. Wow. And it, it's a bit tricky because it's outdoors and I had to get a specific system. It's actually yeah. quite expensive, Yeah. but if you had a project where you can set up a, even a cheap DSLR, you can get for a couple hundred bucks on a tripod behind a, behind a window that looks at your construction site and capture most of it. Um, then doing a time lapse is easy when it's outdoors and it's going to be in the cold for two years. There's a whole host of challenges you have to overcome. Yep. But um, the point is time lapse to show long term, long time spans of things happening slowly is fantastic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hyperlapses, which are now super easy to do with a drone because they have a, automatic hyperlapse functions. Mm -hmm. And a hyperlapse is a time lapse that moves through space. Oh, wow. Cool. So, you can do that um, with a drone. Yeah. The new DJI drones, DJI yeah. drones have yeah. uh, hyperlapse function and hyperlapses are specifically exceptional at capturing um, the important parts of a project. So say you're building a building out of mass timber and you want to capture the erection of the timber structure. Yeah. And that doesn't take very long. It's usually over two, a couple of days because it's it comes prefab yeah. and you just put it together. So you could realistically have a, a videographer come for a couple of days for an hour or two at a time, capture elements of the construction hyperlapse. And then you have a cool one minute video of how That's that awesome. thing was erected. Yeah. Um, so there's so many, again, like the sky is the limit. Um, but I, to wrap this up, mm -hmm. uh, unless you, there's anything else you no, wanted to touch I'm on. I'm all out of examples. <laughs> um, I wanted to, to ask you, what is your all time favorite architecture video or video series or type of video that you could recommend to, to our audience? It'd probably be from amongst, amongst the ones I recommended. Uh, it's hard to say kind of all time, but I think, I think like, I think potentially that John Elway to Arium house one, that's just the one that jumps straight into mind because it's just evocative and there isn't any words it didn't need that it just shows like a day like in the life of a house and i think videos like that just capture you know they show you what's sort of special about architecture so i think i think like that one probably did it for me um or comes to mind how about you uh there's a series that started way back in the mid 90s called architectures Yep. from a European TV channel called Arte. Cool. And uh, I think they're available online, but there's like dozens of those because yep. I think they still make those. But 
they're very slow like the production is very slow it's very kind of calm the narration is is minimal and it's straight to the point yeah and they use a lot of that kind of um motion based kind mm. of photography where they set the camera on a tripod and just take 10 seconds of the life of the building yeah. happening so there's people walking through dogs barking and you hear the cars in the background and they always capture in a way that's just it really it takes you there and yeah. i've seen i've seen a couple of the projects they filmed in person and the experience of being there was very similar to the experience of watching the video and i think that's the kind of the pinnacle of uh how to tell the story of a project if you manage to make it feel like you're there yes and when you go there you're not disappointed because the video didn't like sell you on something that didn't exist so um i th i always thought those guys were really cool and i actually saw the um, the two there's two directors that are collaborating on this series i saw them at a speaking years ago almost 20 years ago um and it was fascinating to hear them talk about their work and and they're not architects by the way they're filmmakers yeah. but they they have such an eye um it, it doesn't look fancy but it's very well put together and the older videos will look a little dated because we're talking about 25 years ago yeah but um even though they aesthetically look dated they're not dated at all they're as relevant as ever as far as i'm concerned awesome man well i think we've given people heaps of ideas to try <laughs> so or things to go look at so let's um let's wrap it up and yeah thanks dave no worries thanks arno and we'll make another video on another topic next month yeah thanks everyone care.